In this video, I'm gonna be doing something I have wanted to do for so long, making a floating island battle board with multiple islands. Think Pandora from the movie Avatar, but themed around Warhammer. And it's only possible thanks to today's sponsor, Woodland Scenics' All Game Terrain. All right, so I'm gonna be making a four by four and buying a whole bunch of foam and some MDF sheets that we'll need to cut into two by two squares. Each island is going to have a stack of foam glued on top of itself, tapering down towards the base, and we'll hide that base with a whole bunch of felt or cotton wool. How are we going to make our little miniatures move in between the islands, Dave? I've been obsessed with the Realm of Light or Hayish from Age of Sigma, but I also love classic halos, rainbow bridges, and I think we should make some like acrylic multicolored laser bridges that are either 40K or Age of Sigma. I want this to be a multi-purpose board that can be used for both. Yeah, and just throw a bit of Mario Kart Rainbow Road into it. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's a great inspiration. So the idea is each of these four islands will be a bit different, a bit of different elevation, and we'll have a whole bunch of these mounting points all around the island where you can connect these acrylic bridges between them, giving you a fully playable surface. Oh yeah, so you can move the pieces around, create a new battlefield, but also move the bridges to wherever you want. We're gonna have to figure out a way to actually like slot these in and slot them back out. So we have some Age of Sigma terrain kits that we're gonna use for this build. That will give us a great opportunity to make sure that we can do 40K and Age of Sigma because those Age of Sigma temples could also be 40K bunkers. What will really sell this image of floating rocks is having some trees not on top of these pieces of rock, but off the sides and also waterfalls, you know, the endless waterfalls you see gushing off video game rocks. I think this is a solid plan. There's gonna be a lot of working out the how of it as we do this video. It's gonna be super fun. Uh, let's tackle it. So Murray's made the foundation of the islands we're going to be carving, and then we're going to be using cotton wool or felt to simulate clouds and hide the bottom of these islands. So in carving out this board, it needed to taper downwards, but it also needed to give an illusion that these could be massively thick, not just floating little balls in space. So the taper needed to be different across all of them. We also didn't want to make it too weak, so I was careful not to create too sharp of an angle in most areas. Another consideration was playable space. It's really important to me that this is a very playable board. For now, I was just focusing on making these super interesting while also giving us the maximum space possible. From the top surface, this is actually a pretty seamless playing area. A bit of impassable terrain in games is fine, but we do want to minimize that. We want to keep that at around 10% of the board total space and no more than that. So this is really a special dream board of mine and I'd always wanted to make it the storm keep or part of the storm keep of my Twilight Sentinels for Age of Sigma. To that end, I cracked open my own Storm Vault and got out these three amazing Age of Sigma terrain kits. I don't think these kits are even available anymore, but there's some fantastic bulk terrain kit for Age of Sigma. And I've had these ready to work on for years, just waiting for the day when it was right for me to make my dream floating board. Murray was doing a great job putting these together while I was carving foam, but it's about time we check in and have a look at how this board's going to shape up. So while all of these are the same height now, we're gonna be chalking them up at all different heights. And we can do things like have this split island with an elevation change where the two different sides are at different elevations. For this to be modular, these bridges that we're gonna connect the islands with, they all need to be exactly the same distance apart. We're going to need to fasten these bits of terrain to the board, get their elevation correct, and make sure the measurements are correct with where exactly we're gonna be able to put these holes. What we're gonna do is characterize each of these big islands with an element or a theme. This one's shattered apart, so we're thinking roots holding things together as it sort of tears apart, an elvish, Zen garden, something like really meditative that's drifted off from wherever it was first done. We wanna do one of these pieces as the hanging garden, so have like roots and flowers growing down from the sides and a little bit of foliage on top as well. In fact, all game trains will be able to do everything we want on this board. From the makers of Woodland Scenics comes an all new gaming brand, All Game Terrain. This new range allows hobbyists to create superior, realistic model scenery with high quality products for models, dioramas, and every miniature craft in between. Woodland has taken its top quality scenery materials from the model railroad hobby and is bringing them to the gaming world with an entire line of landscape products made just for gamers. With this brand comes new items and blends, all new packaging, instructions, and illustrations tailored specifically for gaming miniature bases and gaming mats. 
This new range includes amazing new pre-blended mixes, perfect for quickly creating interesting effects for any setting, fantasy, sci-fi, post-apocalyptic and more. Base paints for replicating soil or grass undertones. And from granular sand to hefty boulders, you can use different sizes and blends of their rocks to create a sense of environment. Ground cover to add seasonality texture to your miniature base or gaming board. Accents such as flowers, brambles, foliage, deadfall and tall grass. Peel and plant tufts. Static grass, pre-blended for superior realism and perfect for fields or meadows. And glues, specifically formulated for adhering to your gaming mat or terrain feature. They've also got water products designed for adding realistic water, water effects and white water highlights. There is truly something for everyone, so make your ideal landscape come to life. If you'd like to check out the entire range for yourself, head on over to www.allgameterrain.com and get started on your miniature scenery journey today. And check out the links in the description. We have the foundation of all these cut up. Before we can make each of these gorgeous elements, we need to set that elevation in stone. Let's glue these at different heights. Let's get that cracked rock going and then we'll know what we're working with and we can start to detail it out. So what I'm making here is the spaces that is gonna give even more elevation to our floating rocks. The higher these get, the more visible they're also going to be. So I'm gonna just add bits of foam everywhere and then we'll add lots of floating rocks to give even more height variation. So that's the plan. We're gonna make a cake. One cup. Ah, ah, ah. Two cup. Ah, ah, ah. Six cups, ah, ah, ah. So I've gone ahead and sprayed down some of the boards with this undercolor to kind of give it some reflections of the life that's underneath it. Just gone ahead and done this in a couple of different colors and there'll be some footage of that for you guys to see. And that's where I got this lovely new scar on my face. Now that's all done, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the bases in this like tealy color. It's gonna be covered in the end so it's not such a big deal, but just in case something peeks through, we're gonna just make sure that there's something to cover it. Okay, so Jen is working on getting all these boards based with a nice, beautiful aqua, but I've got to get in with a dry brush. So I've got my makeup brush here. I'm going to just give all the surfaces a dry brush just to uplift them before we start putting on flocks and some of that sweet goodness from All Game Terrain. The next part of the board that I'm going to be working on is the Zen Garden. So I did look up a couple of reference images and I noticed that a lot of the Zen Gardens have like a greenery border around them. And I think that this slightly more clumpy grass is gonna be absolutely perfect for that. It's gonna give me a little bit of an edge and the rocks are gonna sit on top of it. Speaking of rocks, we have some gorgeous white rocks here. They have a really unique shape and design to them, which I think works really well to the Zen Garden feel. Typically Zen Gardens have a really fine sand texture to them. So this is probably gonna be a little bit thicker but I think it's gonna work really, really well. We'll seem to figure out a way to try and get those lines that you typically see in a Zen garden and see if we can get it to work. But I have all my products, I have my board, it's time to get started. Let's go. I went ahead and started laying down some stones just to see how I wanted the gardens to be structured. I needed to make sure I didn't make these too big and make sure I didn't place any rocks on top of the magnets so the bridges could still lay down flat. Once I was happy with how everything was looking, I went ahead and used some super seal to lay down where I wanted my foliage to go. couple of different methods in order to get the rake feel for the sand and in the end the best method for us was actually using a fork. I went ahead and made some really cool patterns and then sealed this down with a mix of water and glue sprayed on top very gently. So 
while I was leaving my sand to dry, I moved on to making some trees. We had woodland scenics trees, which are metal and can bend in various shapes. We knew we wanted to create a root system underneath the tree. So I decided to cut two of these in half and glue them together. We kind of wanted to go with more of a bonsai feel rather than just a natural occurring tree. The first thing I did was wrap the roots around this cork that we found and then bend the trees into more of a swaying shape. I also covered the tree trunk and branches in a texture paste just to give them a bit more life and make them more sturdy. Once the trees themselves were dried, I went ahead and painted up the rocks underneath, giving them a white stone color. And once this is all dry with a few coats of glue, we're gonna add some cherry blossoms on top, but we'll save that for a bit later on. It's time to get to work on a few more of these focal points and I'm thinking the hanging gardens. It's an area that I can detail out. So I'm gonna take off that shattered piece of rock and go work on it in tabletop time. A huge consideration that I'm always thinking about on this project is keeping it playable while making it look exciting, which means we have to use a lot of vertical surfaces and be really careful about how much we actually put on the table surface. To create a more dynamic hanging gardens theme for this one, I built up some rock using corkboard as well as these all games terrain rocks. While the paint is drying, I also thought it would look cool and really add to the element of life on this section of the board to have a few just really small rivulets of water trickling down the sides of these rocks. Once these elements were dry, I began to create some garden beds, whether organic or crafted using the red gravel blend. And I left a whole bunch of sections in here where I could use some tufts and flowering sprouts to create a whole bunch of dynamic life. Once these features were complete, I used the lovely edging strips to my advantage, running them around some of the more harsh edges and then started to play with the hanging gardens part of the hanging gardens. To do this, I used a mix of the easy bushes and brambles. I could stretch these out and hang them down vertically. With these as a foundation, I could use some glue to secure them into place, make them a bit more solid and then add little elements of flocks, flowers and coloration wherever I felt it needed it to make it feel really alive. Once I was happy with the effect on this single floating rock, I used some acrylic rod to attach attach it to the table proper. I created the effect of thick tree roots and branches to create anchor points that would attach it to the main section of the board. I then followed the exact same steps, replicating all of this, but on a small scale, at a few choice points around the main board. That meant the theme of these gardens and life on this particular tile would flow all the way from that little rock down to the ground below. With a lot of the garden established, I could use a little bit, just a little bit of water effects to trickle down small streams of water and a touch of algae special effects to to show where moss, algae, and lichen had grown around the rock due to this water. So Mari's done some great work at this laser cutter, getting this all good to go and making these light bridges a reality. But now I have to work on the parts that connect the board. So I'm gonna go up and do some 3D sculpting. So I needed to design a nice little gentle ramp that miniatures could balance on that fit into the aesthetics of the board. These would include slots for magnets and be perfectly sized for these acrylic sheets to just be popped in and out of. Now the reason I'm keeping them modular like this, because I'm going to make some custom ones with stone steps as well that allow for shifts in elevation. However, on this project, we already are doing so much, I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna do that at home at a later date and upgrade my board with some up and down light bridges. But this way, all the hard work up till now will be preserved and it'll be modular and usable in this way. So while I set that to print, Mari was hard at work painting the light bridges themselves. He did this by running alcohol ink through the lines that he had laser cut into some clear acrylic. Then using isopropyl alcohol to clean off all of the alcohol ink from the surfaces. We then sprayed on a gentle gradient of color shift pigment onto the underside of each of the bridges to give them a bit of a sparkly, magical feel. I think these turned out amazingly. Now my bridge ends printed up a treat, so all I have to do is put some magnets in them and paint them to match the scenery that's going on the table. And then we should have fully functional modular light bridges. While Jen is working on the shattered piece here, I'm gonna go and make up some roots. I have here some twine and I'm gonna go fray it apart and make some gnarled roots that are basically gonna be hanging out the entire island. Some bits of rock on them, you know, it's been sort of uprooted like a weed or a tree. I think that's gonna be a really cool vibe for this one. So I'm gonna go do that. The cat 
So while we're still working on elements of these boards, we need to get the ground coverage on, but there's someone in the studio who that's their favorite step. Oh, so it's just hugging the flock. This is my favorite step. <laughs> Anything bad that happens from this point on is, is just my fault. fault. Okay, yeah. thank okay, you. That's let's on the do record. this. I love the flocking step. All right, I have prepared an empty bottle, blue tacked it to my drip tray, and I have here some folded cling wrap, and I'm gonna make some water effects using the all game terrain water effects. Who knew? So this is a bit more viscous than standard UV resin. So I'm gonna have a bit more control over the angles and also the texture I can get on it. So I'm gonna set this up and we'll start applying some water effects. Bam. All right, the final touch on this board is to attach the floating island. So I'm gonna use two acrylic rods, drill them in, secure them with some glue, and do the same on the floaty boy. Um, so yeah, let's do it. So that was a huge project. I hope you liked the reveals. There's still those few tiny elements that we need to finish, but hey, that is the hobby, right? There's always something more to do. It's been super fun putting in all these different techniques and seeing one of my dream concepts for a board come to life. And I love how modular it is, how we could change things or add things in the future. It's been really cool. What was your funnest part of the project, Jen? I think just seeing it all finished, honestly. Yeah. Like just being able to have these really cool gaming boards uh, that are just gonna make anyone that comes to play Warhammer light up. Thank you to All Game Terrain for sponsoring this video. We couldn't have done it without your products. Uh, check them out, links are in the description and tell them we sent you. Until next time, hey, uh, keep hobbying. Make some boards of your own. Share them with us in our Discord or something. With all the light bridges, we need to like Heimdall out of here. Yeah, so it's fine.